Stravinsky never composed for the guitar. Sadly. At least he supposedly once acknowledged our beloved instrument by saying, the guitar doesn't sound small, but as if from far away. Fair. We guitarists often struggle with the challenge of our instrument's modest volumes. And let's be honest, there are times where we can't help but feel a twinge of envy towards other acoustic instruments and their seemingly effortless command over the sound waves. Not small, but far away. Still hurts a little bit, but the description is actually pretty apt. Imagine an instrument in a space, be it a tiny bedroom or a grand concert hall. The sound we hear has two main elements, the direct sound and the reverb. An instrument is said to fill the room when its direct sound will make up the bulk of what we hear. Unfortunately, classical guitars in particular struggle a bit in that department, getting the direct sound all the way to the listener, especially in larger rooms. As the remarkable Zhuo Fei Yang will tell us now, the issue is not mere volume, it's all about projection. Be sure to subscribe to Tonebase for the full lesson and more, all within a rapidly growing community of passionate guitarists. I think that it's very important for a performer to project your sound. It can be quite hard on the classical guitar because naturally we are, our instrument is quite intimate. You need to have that desire, uh, wanting to make the last row in the venue to hear you and wanting everybody to hear what you do, uh, the details you do. Working with other musicians, including playing chamber music, including playing concertos, that really helped me to to try to project myself. When you're playing with other instruments, almost, <laughs> almost uh, all other instruments are louder than guitar. And uh, even when playing concerto, even that you are amplified, but you still have that kind of need to project your sound because it's not just about volume. It's sometimes it's the, there's attack, there's articulation, there's this powerful, powerfulness, it's not just volume. So by playing with, other musicians are kind of being forced to, to, to project myself. Of course, we need to have the technique to, to, to support ourselves. Um, that's why I think that all the dynamics, the tone colors, they come from the, rest, the right hand. And uh, I like using rest strong <laughs> um, for that reason, because that really um, help projecting the, the sound, even when we cannot use rest stroke, but that helps. <laughs> I think that a guitar is like a cat, and the other instruments, cello, or the, the, like a bass, <laughs> I always use that analogy. So even that with a louder guitar, for me that is like a fatter cat, but it's still a cat, it's not bass. <laughs> so, Anyway, so what I mean is when people say that volume is not important, I think it's not true when you are playing a live concert, but not, not just the pure volume, the dynamic and that how you project. And sometimes maybe it's not the pure volume, it is the perception. We need to have the perception of dynamic. Um, yes, because compared to, let's say, piano or other stringed instrument, our dynamic range is uh, 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 narrower. So we need to make, make our instrument, make our playing seemingly dynamic. We can create that perception. I find that after lots of experiences, especially playing with other musicians and with orchestra, uh, I find that we actually have a limitation dynamically on the guitar in terms of doing 40. So if we're doing our loudest uh, volume is not going to be comparable <laughs> to orchestra or to piano. So I think that the important thing is the proportion, is the context. So we can make it seemingly 40 and loud, but without actually doing it as loud as piano. Saying so that I think it's importantly that we can go down because compared to the other instruments, we can actually go very quiet. So we could use that to make a contrast when we wanted to, to do 40. So that would I say that we could uh, create a seemingly dynamic result. I actually learned it from the uh, experiences with playing other instruments. I find that at the beginning, I remembered I, I, I tried to fight with other instruments by playing really loud. 
And then when I had the chance to re listen back to our uh, live recordings, I find that I couldn't compare the, the, the loudest uh, volume with other instruments. But while least I'm trying so hard, I actually lost the beautiful tone of guitar, which is a attraction and it's a, a, a pity. So I realized that we need to not lose our advantage, which is the beauty of tone and maybe the intimacy on the quiet bit, but we can create the dynamic and the, the, the forte by doing things in the contrast and proportionally. If you wanted to create a crescendo feeling, well, at least you cannot go very loud. So you need to start very quietly. And then that you, you have the space to go up and you create the crescendo. But if you don't start quiet enough, you don't have enough space to create the crescendo. So that's what I mean, context and the proportion you can create. By using those two things, you can create the, the illusion. <laughs> One thing that I find that I like to practice in bigger venues, and that, that might have made a, a, a difference. Well, at least a lot of people probably, uh, when I was in the school, you know, our, our practicing room is very small. <laughs> so, you know, Royal Academy of Music, when you're practicing in the basement, very small room. So everything sounds very loud and, you know, so everything sounds boomy, but that's not true sound. So I, I like to practice in a bigger space. And, uh, and when I'm sitting in the bigger space, I like to imagine that my sound is kind of ringing in the whole space. I'd like to take up the, the space and the thinking about my sound goes everywhere. That's why I think sometimes that when you play in a very resonant place, you probably feel really comfortable. You can do anything you want, or more or less. But when you play in a very dry acoustic, place, then you, you might need to adjust your tempo a little bit, your artic articulation a little bit to try to accommodate the, the acoustic. But these are all to do with experiences. Some people don't like amplification. And I feel that sometimes I tried to prove myself to not use amplification. I can do it. I'm a dynamic player. But then these days, I feel that maybe it's more importantly to not fight with our instrument. Uh, because if we push too much, we lose the tone, which is really a big pity, because the tone is our biggest advantage, biggest attractions. So maybe we should use amplification, and we can really put more attention into the details, the nuances of the tone and the tone colors, and without pushing it too much, without fighting it. And in terms of playing with other musicians, um, it's also very true, because the other instrumentalists, they wouldn't want to play timidly to, uh, to accommodate you. They want to play naturally. They want to play normally. So if you're not using amplification, then they have to come down to accommodate you, which is not ideal uh, for them too. So I actually think to have a bit of uh, amplification, it actually helps in most of the cases. <laughs>